Hey guys, Attorney Walter Knott. So we're going to be doing uh, basically a video real quick. Oh, it looks like I'm using a different camera this time, but either way, it doesn't matter. The point is, um, in this video, and I guess this thing is, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter. So the whole point of this video is to talk about specifically what's happening with the news. And as you guys know, a lot of the news stations have become more opinion-based pieces. So if you remember back in the day, there was like MTV and MTV would do like, you know, music videos and stories about music and the history of music. And then MTV just became a bunch of crap shows that were, you know, live TV about really interesting and chaotic and not too amazing characters. And as a result of that, that became the new standard for MTV. Same for VH1, et cetera. Similar to that, we have all these news stations nowadays, you know, and all these news stations, the five, the squad, the this, the that, whatever. They all have some sort of spin, which is some opinion based, you know, this is what I feel is going to happen. This is what I feel is going to happen, blah, 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 blah. And they all play off of this and people get excited about it and they get interacting with it. Uh, howdy, howdy. Uh, it looks like me. <laughs> there you go. WB Walt. Very cool. So um, I have a point here. And the point is that, and I'm going to go through the article specifically created about this. And he's still alleged, although the evidence that has come out is now extremely damning against him extremely damning against him. Um, I think if they were to do a new article, there would be no question as to what's going on. The, uh, the individual from CNN obviously was arrested. He was a producer there. He was working with Chris, uh, you know, the whole time while they were doing the show thing. So, but the, the point is this, let me go through it real quick. And I'm going to tell you the unfortunate part of this whole situation. CNN producer accused of child sex crimes once decried growing news stories of child abuse cases in old tweet. So I know you guys know about this. You've probably seen it on the news. Um, warning some details from indictment may be disturbing. The CNN producer accused of shocking sex crimes against Myers once described the growing number of news stories about child abuse. John Griffin, that's the person, was charged by a grand jury in Vermont with three, count, uh, three counts of using a facility of interstate commerce to attempt to entice Myers to engage in unlawful sexual activity. Griffin is currently in custody and his arraignment is scheduled for Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Griffin, a senior producer for CNN's long-struggling morning program, New Day, was taken into custody following a federal indictment accusing him of coercing parents to allow their minor daughters to engage in sexual activity in his home. However, Griffin was once vocally disarmed by the growing distances, uh, instances of crimes against children that were being committed. Just did the math. We have, and this is what he's saying, we have, count them, four stories about people abusing kids today. Three up now. If we're society's mirror, you people suck, Griffin tweeted in 2010. Apparently he changed... Griffin was working at ABC News at the time as the lead homepage editor. According to his LinkedIn profile, he later joined CNN in 2013. The old tweet resurfaced over the weekend amid news of the federal indictment, which was mocked by critics. Uh, bottom line is this. He did horrible things. I'm not going to go into the details of them. I know you guys can read the articles on your, on your own. But here's what I wanted to go ahead and talk about real quick. Uh, how's the pup? The puppies are right now in, uh, in the phones over there, so I can't show you a picture, but they're in uh, Fort Lauderdale just living it up. They had four meals today. Literally, they got pictures of them lying with their feet up in the air with their bellies rubbed, so they're doing amazing. So basically, uh, thank you, SK. I really appreciate it. And Joseph Newcomb, thank you. So what I want to point out here is this. Those children, and this goes for all these individuals that are like quasi above the law, these producers, you know, the, these, you know, people who own islands that basically abuse children, all that stuff. These individuals, they are able to manipulate people at an extremely high level. Uh, producers, what is the point of a producer? The producer shapes the look, the feel, the sound of a program, right? So when you have a producer for, let's say, the Discovery Channel or the History Channel, or whatever, they're doing, you know, they're like, okay, so here's the idea. Boom, big picture. And then here's the lineup of the timeline of shots. Okay, we're going to start them here. We're going to put them here. We're going to get here. And then we're going to end here. And here's the type of camera angles we want to use for this so that people really get immersed into the experience. Producers are there to create a fake reality based upon what they want you to experience and believe, right? It's manipulation. Ergo, it's Hollywood. That's what they've been doing. They make you believe that there's some big event going on. They make you believe that you're part of the action, that you're a wizard and you're this and you're that. But you're not any of those things but they make you believe for a short period that you are those things. So inherent in that, it's important to remember this. This producer had that training from ABC and then CNN, et cetera. And the problem is, is that when you give these producers the capacity and the money, they begin to manipulate other people like they manipulate stories. 
And the unfortunate thing is that those people that they manipulate are manipulated at such a high level to do those terrible acts that they end up many times on a disability program as a result of it. Many of these little kids, these little girls that are abused, it's incredibly horrific and terrible because not only is it that moment in their life, but for the rest of their life, they usually live in a form of PTSD. And let me kind of walk you through why this is such a terrible thing. A lot of these individuals will basically go ahead and end up with horrible nightmares, horrible flashbacks, really bad panic attacks, really bad bipolar mood swings, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, schizoaffective disorders, schizophrenia, all these different things. And the unfortunate reality is that they were caused by an individual who had a desire, who had the training to know how to do the shaping of a world, right? Because that's what producers are. They shape a world and make you feel like you're part of it or that you want to be part of it. That's all advertising is. Producers are, are masters of the big picture and specifically advertising, right? So if you look at like, you know, a logo or this or that, they're all part of trying to create an image that is advertising to you that you want to be part of this lifestyle. And as a result of that, these producers, unfortunately, sometimes get a horrible habit or an addiction themselves, which leads them into a very negative world. So what happens to the kid? So let's say that it was a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, 14-year-old child, sexual abuse situation, that child then basically usually has a difficult time falling asleep at night because the child has nightmares, has a tough time when they're awake because they keep having flashbacks as to what occurred. They don't understand what's going on. They start to go in for some sort of therapy-based mental you know, adjustment to what has happened to them. They sometimes go on medication. They're seeing a psychiatrist, a psychologist, uh, some sort of individual that's going to work with them. And this lasts for a very long time. At some point, they'll go ahead and apply for SSI benefits. And those SSI benefits will basically go with them so that they can get Medicaid to start getting treatment and getting more treatment. Ultimately, that treatment either gets them to the point where they can work. Many of them end up not being able to work. A lot of them end up crying at work. A lot of them end up freaking out, getting aggressive at work, screaming at their employers, screaming at their fellow employees, uh, screaming at the customers that are coming in to go ahead and work with them. And so this person just gets lower and lower and lower because they don't have any money. Then this person has a devaluation of their own self because they failed so many times because they could succeed because of what happened to them. Then they get into usually some sort of habit and that habit like drugs, alcohol, tobacco, whatever, takes over their life and ruins it even further. And then they end up getting into this rotation of sexual abuse. And some of them, of course, end up into the industry of, you know, something of, you know, that particular interest. And, that's unfortunately what happens to a lot of these kids that are abused at a very young age. And what's sad about it, what's horrific about it, is that this country is rampant with it, has it all over the place. We do not have a legal system that is prepared to deal with these individuals. For a short period of time, I saw California was trying to lessen the standard of how bad child sexual abuse is. Um, they were trying to lower the standard of legal uh, requirements and lower the standard of how it's treated and how it's punished. Unfortunately, that's not the answer. So when you guys think about you guys, you know, the retired, the disabled, et cetera, you are a special class of individuals who are, let's call it like it is, fragile. There's not lots and lots of money for you guys to buy your ways out of a problem. There's usually not lots and lots of treatment that, you know, can fix some medical issue. There's not all these special things that you have to go ahead and get you through a, a really big problem. You're living, you know, month to month. Similar to that, there are essentially children who are even more fragile. These are disabled individuals who don't even know what's going on half the time. And that gets into the sexually abused children. And so the kicker is that CNN, ABC, all of these stations through their agenda to you know, train people to create stories that are interesting to get views so that if they have more views, they can get more advertising. As a result of that, they train their individuals to make things at the most maximized interest level that they possibly can, right? They train them so that every time something is created, it's like you know, blinking in your face, super strong, super there, so that you have to watch it. You have to be part of it. And think about that. Like, what is 
why do people love these, you know, super, you know, movies, these superhuman movies, right? These, these uh, cinematic worlds of the multiverse and, you know, Superman, Batman, whatever, these superhuman, the Thor, et cetera, Iron Man, whatever. They love them because it, it makes them believe that they could be part of that world. And that world is a better world than we currently live in. And that is what these producers are, are taught to do. And then when somebody uses that technology, that technique, that mind setting on little kids in a negative way, you end up with what happened with CNN. Now, CNN is not really to blame here in their training. I mean, that's how they make their bread and butter. They train people as producers to go ahead and create a, a fantasy world that's exciting and amazing and that people want to be part of. They're not really to be blamed for what happened beyond that extent. What happened was one of their own took a very dark step out of the light into the darkness and did terrible, terrible things. With that said, I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people don't know. And that is that children that are abused sexually at a young age usually grow up, right? And they have to make a choice. And there's a good percentage of them that then abuse other children as well. I am willing to put it out there that this person likely was sexually abused as a child. Likely. He could have not. It's totally possible. But it is likely that he probably did based on the claims that I process for kids who are abusers, who grew up and became abusers of other kids. As a result of that, we have to have strong legislation to punish this stuff to break the cycle. We don't want the circle going over and over and over again through time. We don't want more people constantly, constantly, constantly going back to this for part of the process. Okay. Um, let's see. And I see that. Yeah. So those in prison for child molestation do not tolerate those who do. Um, and I, I know, I know when it comes to prison stuff, you know, that's one of the things where people get beat up and attacked and et cetera. But I, I want you to understand that this is, you know, Fox News does the same. CNN does the same. These places all do the same. Even look at these four stimulus channels. They're just constantly pumping out four stimulus videos, right? It's the same thing. You want to live in a magical world where it's going to be amazing? Well, what if the government's going to throw another $2,000 at you? You know, there's some facts there that none of those channels talk about. How Trump was willing to give people $2,000 more, right? To, to extra this, extra that, pump prime the economy, get into the hands of the people. He was willing to do that. Biden? Biden had to borrow the $600 from Trump's, right, second stimulus to put it on top of his $1,400 stimulus, which was stimulus number three, to make the total of $2,000 that he said he was going to do and promised that he was going to do. And then he sent a letter out to people saying, I made my promise come to reality. He didn't. He didn't. He promised an additional $2,000 to the American people. He gave them $1,400. You don't get to go to the prior president take from the prior president and say it's yours and then claim that your promise has been completed. You don't get to do that unless you live in America. If this were another country, the president would be, you know, basically brought under immense scrutiny. They would be impeached. You know, it's just, you know, mischaracterized uh, potential disingenuous action. It's just, you know, and a lot of these end up being lies. That's what they end up being, you know? And then the sad thing is we want them to tell the truth. We want all of them to tell the truth. But the reality is, unless we start voting people out, it's not going to change. All right. I want you guys to just think about this. All of these products that we buy into, the just seen on TV, uh, the, the comfiest thing you've ever bought, the coolest beanbag, the, you know, the, the most amazing uh, smoothie maker ever, blah, 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 blah. All these products were designed by a producer and that producer created the world that you wanted to live in, which is why you bought it. And if you didn't want to buy it, it's because they didn't convince you enough to be a part of their little special reality. That's what these fourth stimulus videos are all about. You wanting to be in a special reality. It doesn't exist, but you're willing to take the step with hope that it could exist. All right. That's what it is. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you a little bit later. Uh, have an absolutely, absolutely wonderful, uh, you know, day. Um, I know, yeah, I know. Blind billionaire, and I see little Joe. Blind billionaire is telling his viewers they're getting two thousand daily. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's craziness. Like it's it's just insane. 
It's insane. And people believe it because they just want good news that's you know beneficial to them. But the problem is then people call me an attorney in the industry. And I know I'm not dressed like you know I normally am, but that's because I worked all day outside. I'm just miserable. But they call me and they say, hey, attorney, attorney on. Are we really getting this? I spent a little bit too much this month. I thought we were getting this. You know, B2B told me that we were getting this. I, I never got it. Did I miss something? Do I have to file something? Where do I go file it? And I'm sitting there going like, holy crap, they really believed it. Like, that's the thing. B2B at this point is now, a he, you know, he's not as bad as a CNN producer, but he's getting there. You know, it's not the the mind warping of a child to do horrific things, but it's m the mind warping of adults that are retired and disabled to believe horrific things and then sometimes do horrific things that put them in a very negative position. I I don't know why it keeps happening. It's it's going to get to the point of abuse at some point. Maybe they'll fix it. I, I don't know. But, you know, is what it is. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you a little bit later. I might be doing one more video. I'm a little bit burnt out. Uh, from doing all the work, the physical labor outside today. Uh, but either way, um, and I need to get into the tack room and start cleaning that up too, because like I'm only here for a couple more days and it's just work all day and then it's still not done. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you a little bit later. Have a wonderful night and we'll go from there. Thanks so much. Bye bye.